Hi, so today we're going to talk about removing calcite from your mineral specimens. Now, you may have mixed emotions like I do, whether calcite should stay or whether it should be removed. Um, in my case specifically, I was south of Wilbur Forest off a road cut and I found a, a big piece of calcite that was mixed with some other minerals and um, these are the, the last of it that I chipped away. Um, it's got some black actinolite in here, uh, some calcite, uh, what looks like titanate down there. So what caught my attention was is that there was all these other minerals sticking out of it um, and there's a piece of titanate that was there. It's beautiful quality, it's gem, uh, it's glowing, it's got lots of fire. Um, unfortunately it's a little bit too small, it's 0.6 of a carat so there's not a whole lot I can do with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, this small piece here. Um, it's got, uh, as I said, black actinolite in there. I still see some more titanite sticking out of it. Um, the calcite here, there's a titanite vein running in through that. I don't know if that's going to be any good. It's, it's kind of crumbly and frost fractured, so we'll see. Uh, this calcite is, is too far gone to even consider a specimen anyways. It's been so heavily weathered and, and uh, it's just worn away that it's not going to add anything to it at all. And besides black actinolite, I don't like to work with too much. Um, it's uh, this isn't crystal form. This is just a kind of just a spider web kind of growth. It's uh, the black actinolite um, cat's eye. You can get if you cab it up nice, as long as it's uh, the right type. But unfortunately, I don't believe this is. So um, we're going to start with this one, and I'm going to take you through that process, and uh, we'll dissolve it up. We'll see what we got. So I just want to give you a bit of a close-up of these here before we start. So um, this one I've already started. Uh, it's taken about 10 minutes in the acid bath. Um, I did that the other day and it came up kind of like a, a shiny, waxy look to it. Almost like a, a melted effect and I guess that's what it does essentially. Um, so with this one um, you can see some other minerals sticking out of it there. So we're going to take this one down as well. Um, we'll do them both. Um, here's the, uh, the piece that we're going to start with. Um, Again, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty beat up calcite. Um, I don't know if you can see that on there. There's some what, titanite mineral. Uh, there's some more there, but that's not part of the calcite. I'll have to remove that later. But first things first, we got to uh, start with the acid bath. And it's not going to hurt this, uh, this um, actinolite or the titanite itself um, because the acid isn't that strong. It's just more or less a, a calcium uh, remover and lime and, and all that. Uh, so this is what I'll be using. It's called muriatic acid. You can find it at pretty much any hardware store. Uh, I got this at Canadian Tire and it's pretty reasonable in price for what it does. So um, I'll give you a shot of the warning label here. This is what I have as a basic setup. On the left I have the muriatic acid and then just to the right of that there's the the acid bath itself that's going to be and you need an overflow bucket uh, just in case anything does flow up. Now with uh, calcite it does bubble up very vigorously and and uh, so you want to try and avoid any spillage into the ground obviously. Um, then we also have uh, um, a bucket up front which is going to be uh, your neutralizer which is uh, part baking soda and part water and then behind that is just a, a rinse off for your, your tools and then um, just to the, the far right is the uh, the final rinse that you leave them soaking in. Now I use distilled water so um, just to make sure there's no other calcium, there's no other contaminants that'll get back on your specimen after you're done.
quite a big difference from what it was. You can still see that calcite that's still there. All of this has been removed. And the interesting part about this one was is this is actually a crystal. And if you look at the original image, I'll try and put a, a before and after side by side, but we just saw the top of this before, but it's actually a terminated crystal at both ends, which is uh, it's pretty, pretty fascinating. Um, you can see it's all been removed there. So I'll go after this a little bit later with, uh, with uh, glass and see if there's any anything interesting in there and this one again here something that this is where all the calcite was here there's a tiny bit that's left there you can still see it through here but this right here if you can see it it's a terminated crystal both ends so this one I might have to uh, try and see if I can get out and see if it's got uh, anything of value So as you can see, not a whole lot of valuable crystals came from this process, but uh, what it did tell me was is that there's a lot of good mineralization in that area. So I'm definitely going to be heading back there for sure. Um, no more titanite came out of it that I could see that's really worth doing anything with, but uh, definitely worth a trip back. Thanks for watching.